Testing, one, two, three, one, two, three. Testing, testing. Sounds better. Sounds better. Okay. Well, let's try it. Hey, welcome back to Gaming Garbage, folks, where we take a look at games, review the ones that we can, chat about the gaming news in the industry, and, of course, stream for fun. Today, we're looking at the gaming news of July 23rd through the 29th. And so today is early Sunday morning. Uh, whatever news comes out today, unless it's really big, I'm just going to save it for next week, for the first week in August. And uh, there wasn't too much in the news this week. Uh, I will be going over uh, some some things, but yeah, there wasn't really a ton that happened this week. Uh, kind of a lull right now, and things are going to be picking up later. Excuse me, later in uh, toward the end of August, and definitely September with Starfield, and October into the year. Um, November's going to have Modern Warfare 3, and there is there is plenty of stuff. There are a few things still with uh, Diablo, but yeah, we'll get into that in just a minute. Uh, so since this, probably probably the biggest thing that's been making its rounds on, on uh, the tubes and, and the news is Ubisoft. So Ubisoft, as we know, is a wonderful flipping company that keeps doing things and messing things up and uh, continues to kind of piss in the consumer base's Cheerios, so to speak. And one thing they're doing now is we actually had somebody come forward sharing that their entire Ubisoft Connect account was deleted uh, due to in inactivity. So we had someone share. Again, this could have all been just fake or whatever, uh, but um, Activ or uh, Ubisoft actually confirmed all of this, and Torque shared with his experience that he decided to go to school. Um, gaming was getting into, it was kind of getting in the way with his schooling, and so he decided to take about a year off, do schooling, and when he came back, he realized basically all of his games were gone. He made sure that nothing was necessarily wrong with his account, and technically his account was still there. He kind of had to like reactivate it or something, uh, but when he logged in, all of his games all of the stuff he ever paid for with Ubisoft was all gone. And we're talking about hundreds of games, folks, along with, like, DLCs and any cosmetics that he bought, all gone. And so that he threw up a huge red flag. He decided to share this. He also has um, copies of his emails and stuff from Ubisoft. And Ubisoft's response was just, well, you know... We have the right, through our disclosures, to shut down an account. Um, there's There are some laws for uh, data protection, you know, to, against fraud and theft and that kind of thing. So they ha there's laws out there, and so, yeah, if things are inactive long enough, um, and this disclosure probably isn't just Ubisoft, it's probably a lot of other digital companies too, even probably outside the uh, gaming space. Uh, but, uh, yeah, they were saying that there really wasn't anything they could do ultimately. His stuff was gone. And so I highly doubt he's ever going to buy another Ubisoft game again. And it's actually really nice that this was shared and that the story has been picked up. Um, because, yeah, this is really concerning. It's just like we've had an issue with this. Some of us older folks that have been in gaming for a few decades, we've had some issues with uh, this possibility of just everything going digital and everything needing like an online requirement and all of this type of stuff and this is just another example of just why physical media is so important um, there's many examples but yeah this one specifically you if you own the physical data on the disc you own the game right and we know games are so big now they don't want to bother making two discs a few games do like tales of arise which came out i think last year uh... but yeah in a, in a lot of cases there aren't many games that where you even own all of the discs any or like all of the data anymore for the game, and so um, yeah, this is really disheartening. And so, uh, how Ubisoft basically does this is they check to see if uh, the account has basically been logged into, if anything's been played, or if anything's been purchased, um, or if anything else has really been done with the account, and if it's just been totally dead uh, within the six months at the earliest they have the 
uh, in their disclosure, they have the capacity to just completely delete the account. One is to um, abide by laws with the data protection, and then the other one is um, to uh, basically deal with their own server space. And so they don't want to hold a whole bunch of data for everybody. Um, and that's just an, an inkling right now with this being an issue. Uh, they've actually had this issue, um, had this kind of posted since 2012, October 2012, which is, you know, 11 years. Um, but this hasn't come up until now. And I honestly don't think it's really been an issue or no one's really come forward yet. And so it's not a really common issue or a really common problem, but the risk is still there. And so how they do it, if yeah, if it hasn't been active, they give an email, yeah, which is easily missed anymore in today's world with all of the accounts we need just to even enjoy life a little bit and have fun and pay our bills. And uh, if you miss the email, you know, in 30 days, they just switch the account off. And then there's nothing you can do. Once it's closed, that is it. Um, Ubisoft did actually confirm uh, that they did do this. Uh, and and Ubisoft is trying to do some damage control, having uh, you know talking about the story with some of the news outlets um, to talk about this. But I really think the damage has already been done. Uh, it is spelled out in their disclosures. They have redone their disclosures after this incident on their help website, um, and you're you're able to check that out yourself if you'd like. Uh, but it's a little more detailed of kind of when they're going to shut stuff off. Because they say, no, we're not going to shut anything off unless it's been, you know, years uh, of inactivity. Uh, but with, you know, Torg, that's not the case. So he was gone about a year, maybe a little more, because of schooling. And then, well, he, when he came back, everything was gone. So there's still some discrepancy there. Um, and he, what's horrible is he even has receipts. Uh, from the games that he purchased, and they're gone. Oh, I must mention that this is on PC. There is technically still a risk with console, but everything that has been shared so far has only been PC and Steam related um, through Ubisoft Connect account. So you can also have Ubisoft Connect on your console, um, but if you're buying Ubisoft games through Microsoft and basically you're using Microsoft and using games or whatever and you have that connection it's not like you're gonna lose anything and so a lot of people still use Steam and they just buy their Ubisoft games through that and so I don't think that's really been an issue or why it's really come up yet um, but you know Torg he had a lot of his games purchased through Ubisoft Connect as far as we know and yeah they're gone so so how can you protect yourself? Just make sure that you're using the account if you, if you are on PC and you have Ubisoft Connect and it is linked to Steam and etc. Um, make sure that you're using the account. Even if you purchase something every so often or play something every so often, it will show activity. And they're not trying to shut stuff down to necessarily save space. Um, but they're wanting to save space and abide by the laws that they have to as a company just to do it. But... You know, this kind of makes us think about how the industry is, how the gaming industry is, and just goes to show that, you know, what we really own, what we really think we possess, we may not really control that much of it. We may not really actually possess it. And it's not really up to us at the end of the day if we get to keep our hobby or not. If it's digital, folks, you technically don't own it. It's just on it's just on lease and this is still one of the issues that I have with like Xbox Game Pass or PlayStation Plus. This also brings up some other issues. Is um and these haven't been mentioned yet as far as I've seen, but like um if you have a live service, I think this one was mentioned in Yon, in a Young Yeah video, but if you have a live service, like you lose all of that stuff. All of the stuff you earned, all of the stuff you paid for in the microtransaction stores and through the battle passes and whatever. And we have a game that's already come out called X Defiant through Ubisoft. And that's a live service, free to play game. But again, it's like they're going to get, you know, tens of millions of dollars through X Defiant before this year is probably over. 
with people playing the game because it's free and etc. But yeah, what happens with all of that stuff? All of that just disappears too. Um, and we also have the future of Assassin's Creed Infinite. We also have the future of the next Far Cry game is also going to be a live service. And so this really kind of puts it into the, the crosshairs of like, good grief, what is the future going to look like? And again, I don't think this is necessarily just an Ubisoft problem. I think they understand, hey, we don't want to tick off um, we don't want to tick off people here. But, uh, but yeah, this is concerning. And another thing is, well, NFTs, as I've talked about on the channel, aren't dead. Um, Sony is having a type of digital infrastructure to have their own NFT st space for multiple games. Um, Ubisoft has gotten rid of Quartz and has now added a new blockchain or they're going to try again, basically, through their statuettes or whatever with their Assassin's Creed games. And then uh, there's other companies that are still working on NFTs, too. So Sony's going to pr produce more games. We know that Epic Games is going to produce several more, quite a few more games in the future that are also all NFT-based with that type of, quote, economy and culture. Which, please don't do it, folks. It's a scam. Uh, if if I get enough comments, I can actually make a video on that on why it's a scam. But it really is, folks. Just and, and if you, you know if you want to do your own research, absolutely, that's always a good thing. But yeah, too, it's like if your account gets deleted, let's say, you lose all of your, your quote investments in NFTs, and um, and then yeah, again, uh, what if you get banned? Uh, for let's say 12 months or long enough for them to be like well they're not active so let's just get rid of their account is that even taken into consideration that's not mentioned in their disclosures past or present and that hasn't been brought up in any video yet either along with the nfts and so yeah what happens with that because if they ban you and you're inactive Holy smokes, man. They basically ban you and then they delete everything and they just get your money for free. There's no recourse for that. So that's a lawsuit waiting to happen. And then, too, we also have Star Wars Outlaws coming out later this year. Or maybe beginning of next year, I forget. Um, but that's going to be another game. And if you're on PC, the only way you're going to be able to get Outlaws, at least initially, is through Ubi Connect. Maybe you don't want to buy it through Ubi Connect now, but, you know, technically you don't have a choice. Console players are still going to be able to get it through their store, whether it's PlayStation or Xbox. But for PC, it's just going to be through Ubi Connect, at least so far. So be mindful of that, folks, because this is really kind of just a frustrating thing. And I'm sure this isn't just Ubisoft. I'm sure this is also EA and Microsoft and PlayStation and other companies like Square Enix and this isn't necessarily uh, again holding space like these servers are huge folks I mean we have servers that are like 500 terabytes it's absolutely an unreal number or maybe they're 250 terabytes by now but these servers are huge and think of like you know threads or meta or Facebook or Amazon or um, Microsoft stuff, you know, and Sony's in a lot of different things too besides gaming. Think of all of the data that's got to be saved with all of the accounts out there and uploads and interactions and the multiplayer maps and it takes a lot of space and it is a lot of money to maintain a server room and you also got to have backups and all of that kind of stuff too so that your service never actually goes down. Um, so I can understand from a business standpoint it is very expensive to actually keep keep uh, keep servers going and if you could save space you would want to do that but again it's like people paid for this content it shouldn't be taken from them and we've mentioned this too in destiny 2 as well is just like you know they let you pay play for something for like three to six months and then they take it away from you and it's stuff that you've paid for and i just can't support that business model so this is a little different. This isn't necessarily a business model. This is an inactive account issue um, where they're just, you know, wanting to get rid of it, not have to deal with it on their end. Um, but still, man, I don't know. I mean, what do you guys think about this? Me personally, 
I'm not completely sold on Assassin's Creed Mirage, and so this was the nail in the coffin that I needed when I heard about this to just cancel my pre-order for Assassin's Creed Mirage, which will be coming out in October. So I won't be reviewing that right away. I'm going to be probably have uh, Lords of the Fallen. Uh, Lion sent me a IGN gameplay review um, to take a look at that and just to be more well informed but frick folks I want to I want to um, review something besides Starfield uh, I'd like to review at least a couple games today and also beside or this year and also besides Game Pass but we'll see uh, I'm, I'm wanting to pick games that are going to be good um, and uh, and enjoyable for you folks yeah that's that was a pretty big one uh, let's see hands-on uh, so not having played Armored Core 6 myself, but some people have been able to preview it. They've also been able to have a timed kind of session with the game. Uh, and they've also been able to see devs play it too at certain live events. And um, so far the feedback mo in the most case is really good. And so kind of an overview. And a lot of what I've heard is even going back to how the game was in the 90s. So, like, I started playing it in, uh, it would have been about 97, 98, Project Phantasma. That was the game that I first played with Armored Core. And so your your control buttons um, are still going to be both sets of triggers and bumpers. And and so, yeah, there's going to be, that will take some getting used to. Um, and, and if you played any on the 360, that's basically how they were as well. So there is a learning curve to actually playing this. It is more complicated, even more complicated than I'd say Call of Duty um, with all of the buttons that you're going to be using and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, there is a learning curve, but so far the content of the game and how it's designed is still really, really good. And there is going to be some type of a multiplayer aspect to Armored Core 6. We don't exactly know what that looks like yet. Um, and this, in my opinion, is still not going to have a ton of replay value. I mean, it's going to be like uh, Nair Antonima or like a Metal Gear Solid game or or like Final Fantasy where there's not going to be really be a ton of replay value. It's just going to be a story and you're going to play through it and enjoy it for what it is. And there's going to be some aspect of multiplayer, but again, we don't know exactly what that looks like. The bosses are varied. The um, oh, excuse me, I got a text message there. Um, the bosses are going to be varied. You're going to also have different equipment and different kind of sets of legs. There's all different types of weapons and everything and size of weapons. And you got to hold a lot of things into account because you have limited resources in your mech or your armored core. And so you have energy usage. You have overheating things that can be a problem. Um, and you have all of these wide variety of tools that you can earn in game no store folks which is wonderful at least as far as we know um but you know it's from the same creators as elden ring so expect it to kind of be the same type of elden ring to kind of same type of style where you earn everything in the game and there's a lot of different you know legs and cores and different generators and different heads to have on your mech and different types of weapons there's a ton of different stuff one thing that they have added is they do allow you to have repair kits that you can repair your armor in the mission um, but the play is varied enough where just like in Elden Ring or some of the Dark Souls games or Bloodborne you're going to want to be kind of changing up your play style maybe switching out some of your tools and some of your weapons so that you can be better suited to play the next mission it's not just setting everything in stone and playing through the entire game in armored core and beating it um even young yeah he was one of the guys that has been talking about armored core 6 was just saying that's probably going to be impossible uh with just the level of difficulty of the game so I'm actually excited for this. I'm not going to get it right at launch because, again, I don't think there's a ton of replay value. Um, but it is $60 starting. Uh, you can get the super fancy edition, I think, for another $10. Uh, I don't think there's any planned DLC. And uh, it's, it's basically just going to be the game. They are still, from software, is still working on creating the, the, uh, the, next, the first DLC for Elden Ring. 
And, man, we still haven't heard a single word, and I think that's coming out definitely by next year. I gotta say, I called it. Woohoo! Brownie points for me. Uh, but I'm really excited that they're taking their time with making the DLC, because I do want it to be perfect. That would be wonderful. So, so far, what people are seeing is, uh, is very good. Again, the base game is 60 bucks, and so far, with a couple of polls that I've seen, it is one of the most anticipated, if not the most anticipated, game of August. Uh, let's see, another thing is uh, Remnant 2. Uh, so, again, I have not played this myself, but I wanted to give you a lowdown about the game, and so far, how people are enjoying it, and what some of the issues are. So Remnant 2 came out really not that long ago. People have had some time to play it. Um, so far, it's 4 out of 5 stars. doesn't matter what version you choose. Uh, there's hundreds, at least a couple hundred reviews per version. Uh, and so we're looking at over 600 different reviews so far for the game. And yeah, it has a 4 out of 5. So, so far, that's good. Um, there's different worlds to play. Um, and there's also some secret areas or regions or worlds to play as well. Um, you can co-op with three players. Um, the console versions have some nasty bugs. So maybe wait to actually purchase it. Um, but the PC, they it also has some bugs, but none of them are, are game-breaking. Some of the console bugs, at least that I've read on Xbox, um, PlayStation 5 is also having issues too is that some of these bugs are like save file problems, sometimes the game crashes, um, other times some like loot is kind of disappearing from what some people were saying on the reviews, just with their own experience. And so yeah, it's not perfect, but still the game has 4 out of 5, so it's working for most people. Again, we don't know if like it's on performance mode or quality mode, we don't know if we have those modes. We do know that was an issue, um, and probably still is, with Final Fantasy 16, as I mentioned in um, an earlier uh, gaming news uh, video. Um, if you die, you don't lose your stuff. You just die, you kind of kind of work work your way through the map again. Um, there's more secrets to discover. Some people, um, even when they got the game kind of like pre-release to, to, to test it, um, they've played over 400 hours. And they still haven't discovered everything yet. They still have not finished 100% of the game. The main campaign is about 25 hours. Well, if you do everything for the campaign. Um, but there is something called adventures. Which allow you to basically revisit the worlds in the game. And they're kind of brand new. So there's different enemies this time. or And there's different types of loot. And, and there's, yeah, it's not like it's kind of just pre-programmed in. For everything kind of like Elden Ring like you have a chance for drops but I mean it's a little more varied than that which is nice so it's kind of like you're revisiting but it's different every time in uh, if you do an adventure which is nice uh, and you unlock adventures by completing the world initially and you do that with each one of the three worlds uh, in order to unlock some of the secrets or secret areas, you have to be able to have certain weapons or tools that you need to work for in the game before you can get those. Um, there is going to be at least three DLC packs. My only little worry about that is that they're all supposed to be released within the next 12 months. So basically, one DLC pack every four months. And in my opinion, that's kind of quick. So I'm not expecting these to be huge uh, or, or necessarily groundbreaking. Currently, like from... Remnant 1, we had like a survival mode, and we currently don't have that in Remnant 2, and so I kind of wonder if there's, um, that's going to be added with one of the DLCs later. It's very possible. Um, and then to this game, uh, let's see, this game, the base game is 50 bucks. Uh, and then if you want to get the, uh, basically the super fancy edition all the way up it's it's uh, 70 80 dollars so that's really not too bad for all of the content that you're getting uh one issue that some people are talking about in the reviews with remnant 2 is that you have a level cap of like 60 65 and in remnant 1 you could go all the way up to like 880 and the reason that was so important is because you had all of these different types of like skills and things that you could work on with your character to give you buffs and that kind of thing. And you could actually unlock them all and level them all up 
Well, so far in Remnant 2, you can't do that. And so you kind of hit that cap, and then, well, that's kind of it. There's really nothing to grind for anymore. And again, the campaign is only about 25 hours. So, in my opinion, it's kind of worth waiting a little bit for a sale. You know, maybe they'll actually fix this level cap with the next DLC or some kind of patch in the near future. Man, I sure hope they do. Because it'd almost be like level cap and you and Destiny at 100. And, like, that's it. And then you just kind of play the story, but you never really grind. You never really get to kind of move or progress forward or max everything out. That would kind of be a bummer. So hopefully, uh, hopefully they fix that. Uh, there's also bosses in the game, and these are varied. They have different moves. Um, they also have different um, effects and kind of elemental things themselves. And then also in the game, different types of weapons and different types of effects that you can have as a character um, can have a greater effect on the boss. So they have different weaknesses and that kind of thing. There's a lot of different weapons. There's different classes. Uh, again, I've mentioned there's different type of elemental things in the game. Um, and there's different cosmetics too that you can earn in game. You don't just have to buy them. Uh, again, I don't know if there's a store. Um, and this isn't like a total AAA title. It's more like a double A or like an A title. Again, it's not like a huge mainstream. But if you are looking for something to kind of tide you over until maybe, um, I'm thinking Starfield or some other game comes out, you know, maybe this would actually be worth looking at. Because at least you could buy the game for 50 bucks. Or if you have uh, some extra kind of Xbox credit you got to use or something like that, um, then at least. And yeah, at least you could have something. And I imagine next next month there's probably going to be type of sale toward the end of the month. But then Starfield's right around the flipping corner. Uh, but if you're waiting for other stuff on PlayStation, Remnant 2 would probably a good be a good game to take a look at. Uh, let's see, the last little piece of news. Again, I said there wasn't very much. Um, but uh, Valorant... Uh, is a free-to-play game, and there is a third-party app that allows you to look up all of the type of log and statistic data on players. And this allows you to kind of learn their behaviors, and that gives other players an advantage in the game. Well, the developers and the publisher of Valorant figured this out and saw this, and they're like, whoop, putting a kibosh on it. So if they find out that uh, basically you have an app a third-party app to do this, um, then they're going to just flat-out ban your account. So take that at your own risk, um, but that's kind of nice. They're wanting to keep the play, keep the game fair, because as soon as it's not fair, it basically be can, it can kind of become like a pay-to-win style, and we all really hate that. So most of us don't have a ton of money, especially today. I did want to mention, too, um, with just how things are expensive and money is tight for most of us, um, if you're looking for a headset, I really suggest a refurbished from Amazon, um, and it's the uh, Rig 500 Pro uh, H. Let's see. Let me take a look at what it is. I left it up here so I could take a look at it real quick. This way you can just type it in. Uh, currently, there's only 15 left in stock. I just bought one for my wife. Uh, right now, these are on sale for $25. And uh, ours came out great. But yeah, this is the, um, the Rig 500 Pro HX uh, for Xbox One or Windows 10. Um, if you're on PlayStation... Um, there's also rigs for PlayStation. So take a look online. Amazon is a great source to also buy any rep replacement stuff. And the reason I like the rigs so much, and I'll probably stick with these for a very long time, but my wife and I both like these because, one, they're very comfortable. Okay, you can easily wear these for probably two to three, four hours. And I've worn these up to um, almost four hours before, and I barely can tell that they're on. Um, there's a little bit of kind of dull soreness on the ends of the ears slightly but these are over the ear type of ear earmuffs headphones 
Um, but there's a lot of components that are also replaceable. If you have a Turtle Beach, if you have an Astro, if you have a Steel Series, if you have something else, most of these components, or even a Razor or Alienware, most of these components are not replaceable, which sucks. So when it goes, er, you got to buy a new one or a used one, you know, on Facebook Market or whatever, and that can still be pretty expensive. The Rig 500s, they do have a cord, um, but that's also why they're cheaper too. Rig also makes like the 600s, the 700s, and 800s, and I think they even make a 900, which is really rare to find and super spendy. Um, but a wireless one is going to run you probably about 100 bucks. Um, but if you're into something a little cheaper, or you're just looking for a replacement um, or something that you can fix up over time, uh, this Rig 500 is a rig 500 pro is a great one to do again this is not a paid promotion or anything this is just i've just been playing games for ever and uh, i've tried all different types of sorts and this is my favorite one so far i really enjoy it i've even had some people that have played astros or um had the uh xbox edition or have even had the steel series and they still like the rig better and so I think that really says something. So hopefully that's helpful. Again, you can replace a lot of the components. You can replace the frame. You can replace the headband. You can replace the cord. You can replace your microphone. And you can replace your earmuff cushions. The only thing you can't really replace is the hardcore electronics in your earphones themselves. But you can detach those and put them into a new frame. So take a look online or whatever if you want just to kind of see what they look like but honestly almost everything is 100 percent replaceable and the parts too are very cheap we're talking well a cord i want to say is about 10 bucks also we're looking at um the uh the microphone and the headband and the frame they're all about ten dollars or less as well and so yeah when the part snaps or breaks it's pretty easy to fix and right now you can get a rig 500 pro hx for about you know 25 28 bucks on amazon but again there's only 15 left as of right now and this is uh four in the morning pacific time on sunday so there's really not too many left and the refurbished ones they're not um or no these aren't refurbished excuse me these are renewed and so what that means the renewal uh, the renewed ones is that a lot of the components are replaced and brand new so they take an old one that's damaged or broken and then they replace the components with new components and the one that I got for my wife for yeah about 25 bucks was wonderful the microphone is crisp and new the headband is brand new the frame feels really stiff and nice so it holds well uh, better than mine <laughs> I've used mine for a while now and it also came with a new cord as well that I could uh, attach and use. So, take a look at it. It's very nice. Uh, last update, uh, or latest update with the Starfield merch. So, I know I talked about this. I've made mention of this a few times. And please vote whenever you see um, some of the, uh, the polls that I have on the channel. I really appreciate that. Um, but I'm also uh, making some polls and, and will continue in the future. Um, for merch on the channel and right now we're trying to do Starfield so taking a look at Starfield just my own personal story I wanted to find something like a hat or whatever and there really wasn't very much at all no one's really carrying anything so I was like well that kind of sucks um, there is like one t-shirt I've been able to find which is just a Starfield logo in white against a black shirt and that's kind of it and there's really not much else and so I want to be able to create some hats uh, the hats would be light gray. There would be embroidery and stitching in the front with the Constellation logo on the front of the hat. The hat is uh, would be solid, no mesh in the back. Um, and then the uh, adjustable band would be a buckle, since that's going to last longer than Velcro or whatever else. And then on the very back of the hat, that kind of goes around the little hole back there is going to be gaming garbage gaming will be in green lettering and garbage will be in blue and so if that sounds ex uh, if you're interested in that my goal is to make these as cheap as possible and i'm really shooting for like 25 bucks a hat and then we still got to deal with shipping and how we get paid 
<laughs> and stuff. Um, because I at least want to break even on these hats. Um, and there is a, a lead time too, so I'm not going to get this done in time for the launch of Starfield, but I'm going to try to get it as close as I can. I'm going to purchase 10 hats. Um, this, I'm actually going to purchase 10 hats this week. Uh, they're coming from L.A., and then when I get them, I'm going to take them to uh, the embroidery shop that I found in the next town over, and then I'm going to put the order in, and I'll have a finalized price of what they're going to cost, and then uh, we still got to chat about shipping too, though I'm planning to use Pirate Ship, um, which uh, they allow you to ship quite a bit cheaper. You provide, provide your own box, and that also makes it cheaper for you guys. And so I want to make this as cheap as I can. And then um, please no one outside of the United States. I know I have a few that are outside that uh, watch this channel. But just inside the United States I'll be doing this for folks here. And uh, otherwise the shipping is going to be insane. And uh, But yeah, I'll provide the box. I'll provide the label. You'll get a finalized price. And then what I'm thinking is um, either using Zelle. That's what my wife suggested, so I got to look into that. Or just looking into possibly doing a money order, and basically you mail me that um, through the mail, and then I can cash it when I get the money order. So, anyway, that's kind of what I'm thinking so far. I still got some more details to work out, but that'll be the design of the hat. And if the hat is successful, then, um, then yeah, I'll work on making some shirts. So stay tuned for that, folks. I hope you guys are doing well. Please be aware of just the weather and the heat and the flooding and just everybody seems to be having something in the country right now. And so, uh, yeah, just be aware of what's going on. Pay attention and uh, stay safe out there. And I will see you guys on the next one.